Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, your source for all things investments and finance. In this episode, we'll be diving into the market trends and strategies you need to know about, from the rise of chat GPT and its impacts on the industry, to the overall performance of large cap and small cap markets, we've got you covered. But we don't just talk numbers. We bring you real life stories from everyday traders sharing their experiences and the lessons they've learned. From the volatility of Bitcoin to the risks and rewards of various assets, we'll cover it all. Tune in and join the conversation. Let's navigate the exciting and ever-changing world of investing together on the After Hours Podcast. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have a few new topics, uh, the first of which that we want to cover is AI. It has been the hot kind of commodity going around. Everyone's talking about this chat GPT, um, and I know maybe a lot of you don't know what it is. Uh, so, Alex, I don't know if you kind of want to explain a little bit and we can kind of dive in from there. Yeah. So from what I understand about this whole thing is that the way that the AI works is it's read, I think, like 1% of the Internet, like something insane, right? It's read all of the Internet with 1% or 10% of the Internet, something crazy like that. And it takes that information and it understands how to process that inform information. So by being able to have that ability, it's able to process that information faster than any human can because for us it'll take us a lifetime to read the internet and then yeah. process it it does it in like five seconds so with this new tool of ai it makes a lot of things obsolete you could tell the ai to write you an email you could tell the ai to write you an email in the tone of shakespeare you could tell the ai to uh, pretty much do anything. Like what I did is I've been playing around with it. So I was asking like, what are the best uh, space movies or what are the best science fiction movies? And it gave me a list. It's like based on uh, the ratings or based on the critically acclaimed yeah. XYZ. These are the top 10 space movies. And I'm like, wait, these are all pretty fucking good space movies that I've seen. So it takes all that raw data from the internet and kind of compiles it into one sentence phrase or whatever so you could pretty much ask it anything so like for me like i could ask it how to get better sleep at night how do i get better sleep at night well based on the information that we found you know you shouldn't be drinking at night you shouldn't be watching tv past 8 p.m you shouldn't be doing this you shouldn't be doing that yeah you know, it'll probably take me 20 minutes to scour blog posts to look around but this tool now compiles all that information into one place now the crazy thing is that this tool can also write algos for you. So if you have a trading algorithm that you've been wanting to create, or you've been having, or you're not really a developer, or you don't know anything about code, the robot will write the code for you, yeah. which is the most absolutely insane thing ever. And the scary part is, it's just getting smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter. And Microsoft just announced that they're buying a 50% stake in it for $10 billion, which in my opinion is pretty freaking low because this has the opportunity to be probably, probably bro, in and of itself, like a trillion dollar fucking company if they yeah. do it right. Because now you have to think to yourself with all the information that it gathers, what's going to happen when it starts to come into businesses? So for example... Let's say someone is curious about joining MIC, someone is curious about trading, and they want to kind of get more information on trading in MIC. Well, eventually, the robot is going to get so smart that it knows everything about MIC, it knows everything about me, it knows everything about our industry, and the robot will communicate with the potential customer that wants to join MIC. Now, the crazy part is a human could only talk to one person at a time. The robot could probably talk to 250, 300 people an hour. Yeah. So then you think to yourself, how much is this robot really worth if I could pay an employee $1,000 a month to talk to someone, or I could pay a million dollars for a robot that talks to hundreds of people a day. So yeah. I think it's going to get to the point where instead of putting a mortgage on your house for a million dollars, you're going to put a mortgage on an AI that can help improve your business. Yeah. That's what I think is going to happen. I think it's going to get so advanced that that's what's going to happen. At, right now, how long does it take to get from like A to Z? You type in a question, how long until you get an answer? Less than 10 seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds or less, bro. Now, that's ridiculous. Now, does it cost you any money to use? It's free. It's yeah. free. I wonder how long that's going to last for. Because so James, I'm gonna, I want to play with it right now. I'm going to have it on a separate screen. And I'm going to have it. I'm going to say write a five-star review on a barber shop. 
that I went to today. So let me read it to you. Yeah. I recently visited XYZ Barbershop and had an outstanding experience from the moment I walked in. The staff greeted me with warm hospitality and made me feel welcome. The barber who tended to me was professional, skilled, and listened to my every request. He delivered a precise and expert haircut that exceeded my expectations. The shop itself was clean, well-maintained, and had a comfortable atmosphere. I also appreciated the attention to safety protocols with regard to COVID-19. Overall, <laughs> I uh -huh. highly recommend XYZ Barbershop for anyone in need of a great haircut and excellent customer service. Five stars. Dude, get the fuck. I'm going to start. You fucking a tell me, bro. You fucking tell <laughs> me. I'm going to go to Yelp account and I'm going to start writing five star reviews. You That's know, the you fucking do. thing, bro. This is just right now. Chat, so chat GPT is part of a company called OpenAI. And OpenAI also has a company called Dali, which makes images for you. So what you could do is you could have the chat GPT write like a story and have yeah. Dali create the images for that story and compile it together. And all of a sudden you have a best selling book. Yeah. So how, how long do you guys think until we have novels, we have uh, books, we have movies completely generated by AI and it makes authors almost obsolete? It's going to make a lot of things obsolete, bro, because what you have to think as well is like, I want to get to the point where I know if this book was written by AI or if it was written by like a human. So it might get to the point where like when there's books, there's like a little sticker on the book that says human or AI. So maybe, I don't know, bro, like for example... Let's say I'm talking to Citibank, which has like the worst customer service in the world. And they're all like foreign people. They barely speak English. Well, what if it gets to the point where I call Citibank and I say, you know what? I don't want to talk to a human that doesn't understand English. Just give me an AI. Give me the AI. Let me talk to the AI. Let it handle my shit. It's going to get to that point, bro. And then yeah. when that happens, all those call people are going to be obsolete as well. Because I want to talk to someone that speaks my language, that understands my concerns, that is not shot to hell. That's so now it's going to happen in terms of sales. It's going to happen in a way that, you know, phone sales are going to be obsolete. Customer service is going to be obsolete. Everything's going to be obsolete. Now, what's going to happen when it gets so smart that they then put this AI into Elon's Tesla bot? So now you have your Tesla bot that says, yo, um, bot Optimus, go to Zara and pick out some clothes that you know that I'll like. Because it, it knows exactly what I wear. It knows my personality. After scanning all my wardrobe, it knows exactly what I'm going to like. Go pick out a wardrobe for me. Go clean the dishes for me. Go make this steak the same way I like. Eventually, it's going to get to the, so, the point where AI is so complex and so advanced yeah. that it's going to take over. I don't yeah. want to be one of those guys. It's like, yo, like the world is coming to an end. But it's at that point where it's so advanced. Or like, So I just asked ChatGPT write a five-star review. What if I ask ChatGPT to create me a trading strategy that has, you know, consistent profitability based on XYZ data sets? You know, it's probably not going to be perfect, but it could probably be a really good starting point to get a process going. Or what if I tell it, you know what? I own a barbershop and my the barbershop down the street is doing more business because of XYZ. What can I do to beat them at their own game? Eventually, the AI is going to get so smart, it's going to give you recommendations to uh how to improve your business you know yeah. harry how long do you think until it starts taking like jobs from people like because right now like it's not there yet I, although I've i think like two years or less really two like, years or less probably you know yeah. uh, some yeah. people are going to say five but like they're going to work on this thing like heavily they've invested the way a lot technology of advances bro it's going to be fucking scary bro i think yeah. we're still time away from it kind of being into the optimist's brain like that's yeah. definitely like a ways that's away true. but like it's in our lifetime bro it's going to be in our yeah. lifetime but, but, I, oh, go ahead Harry, sorry. i was just going to say like there's the, also the other side of the coin here which like i haven't heard like a lot of people talk about and that's like what if they rig it to basically just like try and program you to like basically tell you how to think you know like google for example is like, you could say pretty left wing, you know, pretty liberal site. Like if I Googled right now, like, uh, is Joe Biden a good president? It would come up and say he's the best president in the world. And if I Googled, yeah, you can maybe test it out right there. Like, is Trump a good president? It's probably going to come up with a bunch of negative reviews. So if they rig chat GPT to do the same type of thing um, and like tell people how to think or do That's stuff a good like point, that, bro. That's are you worried point. about that? Like, for example, like, let's say I'm using the same prompt of how do I get better sleep? What if it tells me that, I don't know, 
having more salt before bed is going to be good for my sleep. Yeah, right? exactly. Like I'm going to be, how am I supposed to know? Because at that point you're supposed to trust the machine, right? If exactly. It's giving you all the information. It might get to the point where it says, Hey, like maybe just drink some whiskey before bed. And like, that's, what's going to do it. But drink Jack Daniels whiskey. Yeah. It, that's what I mean. Uh, like they could break this thing however way they want. That's why I'm super it's cautious. Scary, bro. Very scary. Because it's everyone scary. is going to listen to that. Like, and I was thinking about this, like in the shower this morning, like when we were like, I was just thinking about like, you know, like just kind of like reflecting on the whole, like Google versus AI type of thing. And like, even on the podcast here, like sometimes like James and I will say something and I'll just be like, fuck, like I'll just look it up, you know? And now you could potentially be using, you know, chat GPT for that same exact lookup because you can get an answer a lot quicker. You don't have to scan blogs. You don't have to do this or that. And, you know, it's crazy to me to to just think that like it could be just rigged in a certain way or you know like you could just ask anything like uh type in about climate change like see what the chat gpt tells you you know um it's crazy to think that like for me the best thing that they could do with this is keep it neutral you know like obviously like there are a lot of people upset at google right now and facebook and twitter for censorship i think the best thing that they do is just keep it neutral and let the ai scan the odds of them doing that probably fucking very slim but um i think that would be the best way to build like kind of trust like elon's doing right now with twitter where he's releasing all the files he's open sourcing the code he's like he's really trying to get that trust and showing how kind of the machine's built and i think if they do that with ai like a lot of people will definitely trust it but if you know it starts doing shit like you say where you know, Jack Daniels whiskey can pay the AI to get good suggestions. Well, what if someone says, is day trading gambler or can I make money day trading? And I pay chat GPT or whatever, Microsoft, $10,000 a day to say, if you want to learn day trading, my investing club is the best place to learn yeah. day trading. So yeah. I, I kind of have this belief that there is a big overwhelming push for uh, like honest media and honest reporting. I think that's why Twitter, you're seeing usage at all time. Yeah. Huh? I think that's why you're seeing people kind of lean politically more moderate again and trying to get away from the extremists on both sides. Okay. So I kind of, I'm choosing to believe and I'm really hoping that a lot of these new AI companies kind of lean that way. I think it's a huge challenge. I know I had a uh, dis an argument with uh, Joe Kelly, one of the moderators, and he we were talking about it. And he's like, oh, it's not really a challenge to Google or anything. And I, and I disagree because I feel when I go to Google and I search something, I get ads and then I have to decipher whether I believe what I'm reading is true and real. And most of the time, it's like I have to go to eight different sources and just to find out or even Twitter, anything, you know, you have to ch uh, source it yourself and make sure you believe it. But with this, it's like I'm hoping that these companies see the value in actually reporting and giving real information based off statistics and data because yeah. arguments politically and with everything has gotten to the point where it's just opinion so if they're using it and coding it the way it should be absolutely with data and everything i think it, would, it has potential to just be amazing. i think the problem also too bro is eventually it's gonna get so smart that like every normal joe is gonna have access to like a mega brain yeah and i think that what they're gonna do bro is they're gonna make it the barrier to entry so financially tough that only rich people could afford to use yeah. the AI. Like, I really think, bro, it's going to cost like a million dollars for like a subscription to use yeah. this stuff. And people are literally going to get a loan to use the AI because the AI will eventually make them more money. I think that's how it's going to be because this is too much power, it feels like, for the average Joe to have. Because like, I'm telling you, bro, eventually it's going to get so advanced where like, bro, people could start businesses using this AI and they'll just keep asking the AI a bunch of shit, right? Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, like, look, this is definitely something new. It's definitely as revolutionary as the internet is possibly. And we just kind of have to wait and see what's going to happen. Because right now, bro, I'm scared shitless right now. Well, what happens yeah. when Elon Musk Neuralink is equipped with this chat GPT and it's in your brain? That's and eventually what's going to happen, bro. So what's going to happen is right now we're a human and this is the robot. Eventually we're going to merge and we're going to we're going to have the super intelligence. You know? <laughs> I, I don't i don't like that you know because I, I i really can't get behind that like i i really just like would you put a chip in your brain alex i would <laughs> i don't know bro i'm a, I'm a crazy guy bro i'm a crazy guy i'm a curious guy i might let him chip me
Alex, we'll do it together. I'll go with you. I'm, I'm curious, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm very just going to sit back person. and fucking watch you, you guys. <laughs> there was no health risk. Like, if Elon messaged me and was like, hey, would you put this Neuralink in your head? And I would be like, absolutely, dude. Please. And then send me to Mars. because I'm, I'm either going to short circuit or become a trillionaire. <laughs> so, yeah. I, <laughs> I just pictured, like, Alex, like, some steam coming out of his brain. I was like, all right, we got to get this fucker to the hospital. All of a sudden, I'm going to start going long stocks is what I'm going to start doing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to happen too, though, is I think the market's going to get, like, you, we've seen this, like, massive, like, tons of money from, like, private equity and people with, like, large amounts of money trying to invest now in these companies. So I think it's going to be, like, any sort of new company where we're going to find out if it's, like, a boom or if it's a bust kind of asset. Um, I'm surprised, bro. I'm surprised we're not having, like, AI sector plays. I mean, I, so when chat GPT, that's first what I, that, I tweeted that. Yeah. yeah I, I figured we were going to get like news, like, you know, every small cap for anyone doesn't know they live off hype. So they use whatever's in the media and they usually, their shit company will use whatever is the new pumpable news and they'll throw out a news article about it and try to pump up their own company. So I'm, I'm shocked too, but maybe it's just not big enough yet because like when I bring it up to my parents, for example, like they still don't really know what chat GPT is. Most, most people who aren't really actively online searching news and all that don't really know too much yet so it could just be too new and too early it makes sense though bro it makes sense though because every year there's like some sort of theme right whether it be meme stocks whether it be oil yeah. stocks because of the war whether it be security whatever it is bro i think and like bro like i wish i was like a guy that had a crystal ball but i really think that the next sector that's going to have a lot of legs bro is going to be this ai shit that's what i think too I agree. It seems to kind of be the consensus on Twitter too. Like a lot of yeah. people. Yeah. Agree. But I think I think what's crazy is like the the difference in news uh in for in the US and Canada, for example, because here there are some people who don't know who Elon Musk is. Like I'm straight up being completely serious. Like like if you come here and watch the news, like at least the local news, which a lot of people watch, but even the, the national news on here, it's so bare bones, like liberal not a lot going on not really showing anything like it's it's utterly insane when you read the canadian news where like if i didn't have twitter or like talk to you guys or you know pay attention with my own kind of like news sources i would have no fucking idea what's going on in the world not a not a clue like all you hear about is yeah we're helping out ukraine and uh covid 19 is bad and that's literally the news here yeah dude i mean what i found that's was... the news bro come to canada it sounds I don't want to come, bro. I don't want to come, bro. <laughs> like 90% of people, and this is going to sound extremely mean, but I think 90% of people are better off that way, kind of just like going with the flow of their own life because then most people, it sounds awful, shouldn't have these crazy opinions and they get too much into like the yeah. news. And I think that's what's happening in America in particular is that people are getting so over, over obsessed with news. Like, I mean, I go home, I see my parents watching the same news station 24 seven and I'm like, is it CNN? I'm not going to describe what my parents are. <laughs> CNN, bro. <laughs> the absolutely, Clinton News absolutely, Network. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely not. <laughs> I could not go home. But no, it, it's just, that's the thing. And it's, but it's on both sides. You can go to, you can go CNN, you can go Fox, you can go Newsmax, and you can even go to Twitter and you can say, oh my God, these people are obsessed. And that's why I love this idea of AI, hopefully taking the right path and being like the yeah. overall end all be all of news sources. So we will see. It's going to be really interesting. And, and I think that, people are starting to really understand the power of technology. And I also think it's awesome because, dude, there's some lazy, lazy freaking people going around right now, not, not going to work or they're capable of work and they just choose not to because they feel like, oh, like there'll, there'll always be jobs available. Nothing more would excite me for some of this technology to take people's jobs who are being lazy about it and who won't accept it. So I think that's what's going to happen next. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, but in right now, I mean, I don't know. Things in the country are changing. Like markets definitely heating up a little bit. Um, markets way better. Markets are way better now than, than previous podcasts we've talked about. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think is going on with the large cap market? We've bounced pretty big uh, from the lows. Um, you know, how do you guys see things shaping up going forward? You go for it, Harry. Uh, well, to me, it's like kind of a coin flip. You know, we have earnings season coming up. And how are those earnings going to play out? I've heard a lot of reports that people went out and spent a lot of money this Christmas. Me personally, I didn't see that where I live. Uh, it was pretty bare where I was. Like, I went to, uh, you know, I got my parents some nice gifts and shit like that. Like, I got my dad, like, a shirt from L.L. Bean, um, which they just opened one up here where I live. So I went in there, and that's, like, kind of an overpriced store. Like, 
I paid, I think like $139 for one shirt and there was no one in line. I just walked right through. I couldn't believe it. All my Christmas shopping, no one was in line. There were no lineups this year where I live. So to me, that tells me that a lot of people were either spending a lot of money online or they didn't really have a lot of money to kind of work with or spend because it is, you know, it costs a lot to live right now. It costs a lot to drive a car right now. Like it, everything I feel is just like overpriced. Like when's the last time you went to the grocery store and you were like, wow, I got a deal on this. Like never, I've never felt that way. And like since before COVID where something's on sale and I'm like, fuck, that was regular price like a year and a half ago, you know? Like I, every time I go out, I just feel like I'm getting like ripped off. You know, I, I don't know why, but it's just, it, you know, like for here for a block of cheese, it's like 12 bucks and it's just, it's like insane, you know? So every time I like get cheese, I'm like, fuck, I'm getting ripped off. Every time I buy any produce, I'm like, fuck, I'm getting ripped off. Anytime I buy any bread, fuck, you know, like you go over to the meat section. Okay. The chicken here is $35 for two chicken breasts. So it is insane, you know, like it's act actually insane. And there was one lady who like I had already like checked out and I was walking away and like she got there and half her cart was like full and she was like, yeah, I can't afford the rest. And it was just crazy. You know, yeah. it's that's like what I see like every day going to the store, you know, just like a lot of people really struggling here. So, um, yeah, I didn't see many people shopping here. Maybe it's different in the States, but that's kind of my perspective. Yeah, the The problem is the rich people are still doing just fine. Uh, I mean, their 401ks might be a little lower than they have been in the past, but like at least where I am, the the wealthy and the top, you know, 10% of people are doing just fine. The people, the middle class are the ones who are struggling. Like I don't hear wealthy people complaining about the price of eggs right now. That's just kind of how it is. Like they talk about it, but like no one, it's not going to change someone's view. Yeah. But when the market's rebounding, you know, people seem to be in, in higher spirits. Um, and I, I see it. I mean, especially at like the shops and stuff, you know, when the market's doing better, people definitely are spending more, they're tipping more, um, they're happier than when things are in the shitter. Um, you know, I think though that I still am a higher believer that all these like market rallies that we're experiencing right now are just going to be the kind of up and down cycle for a while until we have like a direct um, news something headline that's going to change the direction, you know, more permanently. I also think for me, like, I don't care how much money I have. If I'm, if I have to pay $20 for a fucking block of cheese, I'm going to say I'm getting ripped off, you know, like no matter how much money I have, if I have to pay $20 for a block of cheese, like it, it may not change. Like I'm still eating cheese. Obviously I'm still eating eggs and driving a car and shit, but I'm still going to be like, wow, like I'm getting ripped off here. You know, I hate getting like ripped off like that. Like to me, it's just like a lot of people here are definitely getting taken advantage of. And what they did is they raised all the prices. And then they were like, the first winter month is going to be a price lock. We're not going to raise any prices. We're here for you guys. You know, because there's where I live, there's two main grocery stores. And that's it. And both of them did this kind of like price lock thing. So they just jacked up the prices two times in December, said, oh, we're not going to raise the prices, price lock blow out deals and then you go there and it's just like bro like yeah. you know like a lot of my girlfriends friends are struggling really hard um a lot of my friends are struggling really hard because like you get a paycheck it's spent on food that's it yeah i mean yeah. alex do you think do you think that this like prolonged inflation and now like with the fed coming out saying obviously they're not going to uh, lower rates in 23 if anything they're going to continue to raise what kind of effect do you think that's going to have on like the overall market, even though we are rebounding right now? Uh, what's kind of your like outlook long term? So here's the thing, brothers, a couple things. Number one is earnings season is going to be very important to see what happens. It's not really the numbers. It's going to be the reaction. So, for example, like let's say a company like Tesla is now 70 percent this year. Chances are, bro, as long as their earnings aren't dog shit probably going to go up because the price like it's a lot of bad news is already priced in is what i feel like to me i think this is the most bearish people have been i think people don't have any hope i think i read somewhere that all like retail investors like dumped all their stocks and stuff like that so like for me i think that at least in the short term we've probably have a bottom yeah um i think it's going to depend on earnings what happened after the fact do yeah. stocks go up on bad earnings that's a signal that things are starting to get better but overall, bro, I think we have probably about one more year, 2023, of just being dog shit. 
And then I think next year is when it's probably going to start to really take a course and rebound because the reality is this, bro. Like, eventually the Federal Reserve is going to drop rates. Eventually they're going to print money again. And eventually inflation is going to be an issue in the next 10 years. It's the same cycle that always repeats because Americans are stupid. We waste all of our money. Americans don't have any money. We spend it all. And then the government bails us out and gives us more money, which creates more inflation. So they're going to stop inflation. And then they're going to print money and then inflation is going to start again. That's all that's going to happen. It's just a matter of when is it going to happen? Yeah. yeah. I think too, like we're kind of at this point, like I actually ran through a checklist. Like this was a couple of weeks ago or when Amazon was at like 80 bucks a share, dude. And I was like thinking to myself, like, why the hell am I not buying Amazon at $80 yeah. a share? It's Amazon. And I kind of ran through a checklist on my own head. I'm like, when you look at the news right now, we know everything that's coming up. They've The Fed has told us what they're going to do for the next year. Um, companies have told us the outlook of a bear market and that they're doing layoffs. There has yet to be news and I can't predict any news that's actually going to come and be like, holy shit, the market's going to zero. I mean, unless a nuclear war breaks out. <laughs> Other yeah. than that, I mean, nothing's going to change. So I kind of feel like um, we're on the path of just, we're going to bounce for a while or just bounce around. We'll have these up and down days, just how the market usually is um, until we kind of come out of this. Like I know from everyone I listen to, people say be kind of Cash flow positive and be really ready until 2025, like which sounds like really yeah. Cool. And what you gotta remember, bro, is even a company like Amazon, when the 2000 crash happened, the stock went to like eight dollars or some shit, right? Yeah. Eight dollars split adjust, like split adjusted eight dollars is like literally like one dollar, right? Because Amazon did like a 25 split, so it went to like one fucking dollar. Bank of America went to like two dollars. You know what I'm saying? So like when these things happen, like. In the short term, even I think Warren Buffett said it. He's like Berkshire Hathaway stock went from minus 50% three times. Three mm -hmm. times is when he said that happened. So like, look, these stocks are going to go down 50%, but probably when the rebound happens, they're going to rebound 500%. So it's just about being positioned in properly. And for me, I think that, you know, I'm not investment advice, but like, to be honest, like you got to park some money on the side somewhere, park some money in investments, park some money in cash. But this year is going to, I think last year was the year that everything crashed. This year is the year that things are going to get fixed. And then next year is the year where things are going to improve. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing it actually with like risk assets, right? Like we were talking about, um, like you're seeing Bitcoin now bounce. Like, why do you think that's happening now all of a sudden? Yeah. Bitcoin is bouncing 30%, guys. So as we're recording this, Bitcoin went from 16,000 to 23,000. And I think that that signals, because usually what happens is the market goes down because people pull out money and put it into safer things, whether it be bonds or whatever it is, because they're paying such a high interest rate. So speculative assets like stocks and Bitcoin go down when there's like a safer asset. Like let's say if the bank is paying you a high interest rate or if um, treasury bills are paying you, right? But what that's telling me with the stock market bouncing and with Bitcoin bouncing is that people are now speculating that risk assets are the best place to park your money, which is now going to restart that cycle of kind of bidding yeah. things higher. Yeah. yeah. And I also think like after Christmas, like, you know, like people may have some extra cash on the side or whatever. And don't forget, bro, by the end of the year, everyone had to sell their stocks for losses for tax loss harvesting. Yeah. So the last December was all tax loss harvesting where people dumped their stocks to save on taxes. So like, I'm sure that has like uh, an effect on it as well. No, oh, 100%. Yeah. And I guess one of the, the interesting things now we're seeing is like with all these risk assets going back up, like we're seeing the small cap market absolutely like heat up. I mean, it, we haven't, I'm going to knock on wood like eight times, but We've had a, almost a runner every day since January 1st. So, yeah. you know, and I, I've seen you guys been doing really well. And, and Alex, I don't know if you wanted to, you know, kind of before we wrap up, touch on your trading a little bit because you've been, you've been crushing it. Honestly, bro, I want to actually ask you about your ring, bro. I want to ask you about that sleep <laughs> ring that you have, dude, because like, I haven't been really getting too much sleep lately. So I want to see if that shit actually works. So I want to ask you about that. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm the biggest skeptic of things like, right. Like, I mean, I'm like one of those idiots that will buy, like my girlfriend says I fall into gimmicks because I always buy shit, but then I just need to test. It. <laughs> That's how I am, bro. I just buy shit all the time. Yeah. And, um, and you know, I saw this and I saw a bunch of guys like really high level, like traders and like smart people that I really respect, like trying this thing out. And I'm like, like, all right, I got to do this because I'm one of those people. I'm anxious. I struggle with sleep. I'm very stressed all the time. So I'm like, you know, I need to start starting in 2023, focusing on my health. So I bought this thing, man. And I can't believe how accurate and efficient the reporting of it is. I'll show you guys kind of what it looks like. It's just like this little ring and it has the sensors. Like if you can see that in there, 
and you wear it 24 seven. I mean, you don't, you can wear it in the shower. Like I don't, but dude, it is insane. Like the first night I wore it, like this is a good quick story. First night I wore it, I slept incredible. I got like a great sleep score and it said like, you're ready for the day. And like, you know, you're energetic. And I, it was weird. I felt amazing all day. The next night I went out with a friend for dinner that I hadn't seen in a while. I had a drink, uh, just like one alcoholic drink, but I was out late. And then when I got home, I did an exercise and like, I slept like shit and I woke up and it was like awful sleep score. You know, you are, you need to like watch out for this today. Try drinking water, taking that blah, blah, blah. The trade, when I started trading that morning, I actually made two mistakes, which I never, like I'm, I never do. And like, when you think about it, it's like those days where you're just kind of out of it and not good. It kind of gives you that. And it's like yeah. a useful tool for you to be, Hey, I slept like shit last night before I get to the desk. Maybe I need to do something to wake yeah. myself up. So from here on out, if I get shitty sleep, I do like a quick exercise in the morning to kind of get my brain flow and clear the brain fog. Uh, I try to drink more water uh, and stuff like that. So it's it's actually amazing. And I know, Alex, you were talking about it. And we've talked about this since I met you just sleeping. I highly recommend giving it a shot. And there's also a Gucci version if you're really interested in that. So it's a, <laughs> nice, But it's cool, man. It's definitely cool. So highly recommended. It. It's called Aura Ring. Um, you know, so you have to wear 24-7? You, you don't have to. I choose to because I like to know throughout the day. Like I always, again, I'm an anxious person. So sometimes if I'm getting anxious, I check my like heart rate and it just says your heart rate's actually really low. And like, there's nothing, there's nothing going on. So it's like, it gives me that kind of clarity. Yeah. Um, and also it's like something interesting. I use it as a tool in trading. Like if I'm going to trade, like sometimes I just look at it and same, if I'm like getting anxious for whatever reason, like it kind of helps center me back down and just to like reset and same thing throughout the day. So yeah. It's, it's nice. And it's nice to see that if you have a health goal, you're heading towards that path. Like I, it tracks calories. The only thing is like, I know people are going to say an Apple watch does a lot of the similar things. I have both one. I can't wear an Apple watch when I sleep. I don't know why I'm a sleep zombie. I rip it off. It's just a weird thing. And I also hate working out with an Apple watch. Cause I feel like I bang it on weights and shit. So yeah. I don't know. I, I've come to really enjoy it. And you know, you can only wear it if you want when you sleep for like that actual like data but i don't know i i found it's it's very interesting and i really care about health and fitness this year and it's like a big focus so yeah highly recommended they should sponsor me and i can uh you know maybe get get some free mic yeah get your <laughs> referral code bro yeah, yeah i'm gonna look at it yeah seriously but yeah man it's and it's helped like i said it's helped my trading a lot like i knock on what always but trading has been awesome in january things have been going really well it's a great start to the year so it's i kind of am trying to assimilate body mind and health with performance so yeah I think love it bro love it great job i good but yeah i mean you guys have been crushing it too so i'm really proud of you guys seriously let's yeah. keep it up bro let's keep it up like i was telling you bro before we started this podcast is we've been in a drought for a really long time and this month may be a month to just clean up and make five months salary in one month yeah so we gotta stay focused we gotta be prepared yeah. And with the opportunities there, we got to capitalize. Yeah, 100%. I think I have one question before we wrap up here, because uh, we're coming up on that 45 minute mark. But Alex, as a as a trader who has made so much money uh, in your career, and then going to 2022, where you still made a lot of money, but not as much money as like previous years, like any trader in the world, the fact that you're green is even insane to me and awesome. How do you, how did you come to this year with the, a clear and ready mindset to perform and like not think I need to make more than I did in 21 to make up for having a, maybe a lower year in 22 or not as much action in 22? You know what it is, bro? For me, I just want to be able to show up. And if there's an opportunity, I want to be able to capitalize on it. That's the, my brain works based on opportunity. It's if I see an opportunity and I take advantage of it, that makes me happy. If I see an opportunity and I don't take advantage of it, that makes me really upset. So seeing the lack of opportunity uh, last year was definitely a mind game. It really definitely played with my mind a lot. Um, but what I try to remind myself, bro, is just try to stay patient. You know, I'm trying to remind myself that, you know, trading is cyclical. You know, there's certain areas where or certain time periods where you can make a lot of money and there's certain time periods where it's very slow. What I also tell people is, let's say you made $10,000 in 2020, but you made $0 in 2021. You know, you could just say that, you know what, in 2020, you made 5,000 in 2021, you made 5,000. You know what I'm saying? That way you could kind of trick your brain into saying, you know what, you made 
two year salary in one year. You know, trading is not very linear. It doesn't follow like a clear path. So coming into this year, as you guys know, I reset my account. Uh, I did that kind of as like a test to myself to see how much more disciplined that could be because we were coming into the year with like not really much opportunity. Right. We were coming into the year with like nothing moving. So I said, this is the perfect chance to improve on my discipline and improve on my process by trading with a smaller account. And you can't make this shit up, bro. Everything just went crazy. Everything. Yeah. You can't make it up. So I came in expecting to have a slow start to the year, expecting for everything to be shitty, expecting to be everything horrible. And all of a sudden, bro, we had a first red day set up within the first two weeks. Yeah. We've had markets going crazy. The last time we had a first red day set up was Bed Bath & Beyond on... So this is being recorded on January 21st. The last time we had a first red day set up was recorded on August 17th. Yeah. <clears throat> August, September, October, November, December, January. Five months ago. Five months ago was the last time we had an opportunity like that. Yeah. That's wild. And it's and it's good to see that. You, and it's actually amazing because I feel like lowering your account made you better. And you've kind of been like that for as long as I've known you. Like you, you almost perform better with this. Like, and you get I think I do, bro. I really do think I perform with less. And like, bro, it's it also comes down to like, yeah, I perform really good with less. But like, bro, like the bias comes in and it says like, if I just had like a little bit more money to trade with, I could have gotten a little bigger and made a lot more money. So like, it's, it's good, bro. It's good to just kind of trade with that small account, take the money and run because like, bro, like even with a small account, bro, I'm putting up four five, six thousand dollar days. It's million, two million dollars a year if I do that, which is great, bro. It's great fucking money. But then there's like that competitive feeling yeah. in you that says, motherfucker, you bitch ass, pussy ass, fucking <laughs> loser. You could do so much better. So like that's the battle that I fight with every single day is the battle of do I take the easy, predictable money and go enjoy my life? Or do I, you know, push and get more? And I've decided that this year is a year for me just to like focus on that consistency, focus on making that easy, predictable money. And, you know, I'm not the type of trader where like, bro, it's do I like the money more or do I like the stress free more? And I've realized that being more stressed and making more money doesn't make me happier. Yeah. So I have to make less money, be less stressed to be happier. Yeah. So that's the scale that I'm focusing on right now. So I want to be able to make less money with less stress that leads to more happiness rather than adding an extra zero, being more stressed and being more unhappy for something that I don't really fucking need, bro. I don't really yeah. need that extra financial money if it means that's going to make me unhappy. So I know a lot of people, bro, that make a metric shitload of money, 10, 20, 30 million, but their entire life, 18 hours a day is the market, bro. And like, for me, that's just, I'm not willing to sacrifice that for money. So I'm just trying to focus on making less, being happier and enjoying my life because Towards the end of last year, I felt really frustrated that like, you know, business was slow, that trading was slow, like everything was dead. It made me very upset. So like, because I was upset towards the end of last year, I want to focus on this year more on like happiness. And that's yeah. where I'm at. I love that. I love yeah. that. I think I'm, and I want, I'm really proud of you both. I think you guys are crushing it. And Thanks, bro. You too? Yeah, bro. You're killing it, bro. You're fucking crushing it. Yeah, James too. So all of us keep up the good work and uh, yeah, probably a good time to end it. So thanks everyone for watching. Thanks Alex for coming on. Thanks James. And uh, we'll see everyone for the next one.